not sodium chlorate, but potassium chlorate. And Chris here has been heating up some potassium chlorate, releasing some of the oxygen. And I can show this with um, a wooden splint here. What I'm going to do is blow out the splint. So now it's not a light, it's just glowing. But if I put this into the tube, the oxygen that's being given off here relights the splint. So now it's out. And now it's lit again. And that's a reaction from the oxygen that's coming out as the potassium chlorate decomposes. Well, I can show another reaction with this. This time I'm going to react the oxygen in the potassium chlorate with another jelly baby. All right. So, here goes. Go. Cool. Well, that was really rather violent. And that was all the sugar reacting with the oxygen from the potassium chlorate. And it's still going. Poor little jelly baby. There's not much left of him now. Well, we'll just leave that one going. So we've seen how the oxygen comes from plants most of the time, from photosynthesis. That's where the oxygen in the air comes from. We've seen that we can chemically generate this by heating up something like the uh, potassium chlorate here. It's still going. It will finish in a moment. There we are. It's just about to finish. Now, what if we wanted lots and lots of oxygen? If we didn't want all the, the rest of the chemical in there, if we didn't want the sodium chloride left over and so on, if we just wanted some pure oxygen, how would we get this on a large scale? 